Not a bad view for today's workout. So, actually just finished the workout today. We went into town and then ended up having to come back here and I didn't want to go back to the gym and then have to come home and then go back for a cycle later. I have this neat little resistance band that I got from Walmart. I think it was $15. You can stick your foot in it and do kickbacks. I've got a fun workout planned. Um, I'm gonna put it on the screen in just a second for you guys. I'm nice and sweaty. It was a really good workout. So make sure and hit that thumbs up if y'all do enjoy these workouts. I can bring more of those to you as we start to travel because you guys know that I won't always be able to get to the gym. So I'm gonna have to do a lot of home workouts like this. If you're new to the channel, I'd love to have you along. And comment below if you plan on doing this workout and then whenever you do, come back, comment, and let me know what you think. But hopefully you guys enjoy. Let's get to it. So I'm going to go through this week's Q&A while y'all watch the workout footage from the at home workout and I will list the full workout in the description box below so make sure and go check that out. First question for this week, a very very simple question, how often would you suggest using a foam roller? Should it be as a warm up or after the workout? So foam rolling or myofascial release is basically a form of massage. It's going to massage up the knots that build up in your muscles over time. So that's why massages, stretching, and foam rolling are all highly recommended. Um, I would recommend warming up with foam rolling. I do about five minutes myself and then cooling down with some foam rolling about five minutes. A quick sweep over certain muscles that I work, but I have read and found that it takes about two minutes per area. So if you're foam rolling your calves, which I do a lot because I tend to have very tight calves whenever I'm squatting, try and spend about two minutes slowly rolling through the area as you find places that hurt, um, as you find knots, you kind of pause on that knot for a little bit for about 30 seconds until it releases and then you move on to the next area of that muscle group. You mentioned letting yourself have trigger foods. How do you remain patient with yourself when learning to eat your trigger foods in moderation especially when overeating them. I talked about this in one of my Vlogmas videos. I went back to try and find it, but I couldn't find the specific portion of the video that I talked about it. But I took, I seriously went for about a year of eating some form of ice cream or Pop-Tarts or cereal every single day because those were previously my trigger foods. Yes, it does take patience. It takes some degree of willpower to have just one serving of those. But what I found that helps so much is reminding myself that I will have it again tomorrow. If I wanna have it again for breakfast, I can. These foods are not going anywhere. So reminding myself that they're not in limited quantity, that I'm never ever going to restrict them for myself again, it allows you to enjoy those foods a lot more and actually go overboard less and less. Now I did still go through periods of overeating and slight binging during this time, but I just, honestly, I accepted it. I accepted when they happened. Still, whenever I have a period of overeating or if I go way overboard on food, I just accept that it happens and I move on the next day as if it never happened. Just like life goes on as normal. So I tried and focused on that as much as possible. I still do to this day and I highly recommend doing that with yourself and never ever restricting those foods from yourself again. It never works out for us in the long run. The tips on trying to cut down on foods that make you feel like crap. Define crap. I think that they went on further in this question to say that they felt bloated and, and kind of sluggish after certain foods. And I definitely feel that way too. As I eat more whole foods, I, I enjoy whole foods now. I enjoy greens and grains and very, very simple foods, but I didn't before because my body and my palate were used to those hyper palatable foods, the high sodium, high fat, very high oil foods that basically give you a lot of flavor with not a lot of nutrient content. So when I do eat those foods now and again, like whenever Matt and I go and get a pizza, 
I do find the next day I wake up, my mouth is dry, my stomach is usually kind of upset. I don't feel my best. I feel kind of sluggish. Workouts are tougher. Climbing is harder. I, I honestly, I don't want to say you should cut down on those foods because as I talked about in the previous question, cutting out any foods, restricting any foods, especially if you actually enjoy them, is never gonna work out in the long run. So I would recommend just continuing to eat whole, non-processed foods as often as you can. So foods that are very, very simple and, and as close to their pure form as possible. Not going for those overly processed foods or whatever makes you feel like crap not going for those as often, but if you do want them, enjoy them. Just know that you might not feel your best the following day. So you just kind of take it with a grain of salt. As you continue to eat more of the whole foods, your taste buds adapt. I never used to be able to eat kale or spinach without adding a butt ton of salt and seasonings and cooking it in oil. Now I, I eat a huge salad. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of salt, but I don't really need that much and it's because your taste buds adapt and they change and they start to appreciate and enjoy more whole foods or foods in their whole form over the um, processed chemically produced hormone laden foods i hope that helps <laughs> does it make a difference if i do carb cycling with all the math that comes along or is it okay to just keep protein in check and eat carbs and fats based on cravings that day this question is great because it caters to more of the lifestyle aspect of nutrition that I try and, and help others find. If you have some very, very specific physique goals or trying to meet weight for a certain event, it benefits you more to be very in tune and consistent with a specific macro split. But if tracking your protein, your carbs, and your fats is just completely overwhelming to you, I would recommend first aiming for protein and trying to get generally within the calorie intake. So as you said, having carbs and fats kind of interchangeable, but making sure you're getting in your protein amount and then just aiming for the overall calories. I think that that can most definitely help you continue to make progress. It can drive you less crazy over time. And then maybe as you get the hang of that, you can add in trying to aim for more carbs and fats but you can also take note of how you feel. So if you have a day where you had a ton of fat and not as many carbs, see if your energy was good, see if your workouts were good, see how you enjoyed the food, how satisfied you felt. And then days that you're slightly higher carbs, maybe lower fat, see if that changes at all. And then kind of adapt and know for the future, hey, maybe I feel better on higher carb, lower fat with the same amount of protein. Really, you can cater it to you and that's one wonderful thing about flexible dieting, you can truly make it flexible so that you can make it work for you long term. Last question, you guys, this one's a bit of a long one. I've done all sorts of workout programs in hopes of changing my body composition and becoming more toned. My friends and family have all noticed changes, but I don't see any changes. I currently work with a trainer, have been trying to watch my carb intake and macros per his recommendations while the numbers slowly change and progress. I just don't see it. Have you experienced this before and what do you recommend or is it all just in my head? First off, I would recommend talking to your trainer and coach about this. Talking to as many people and getting different aspects and different points of view about this is going to help you because you can take what you will from each person and apply it to yourself. My own thoughts, we are our worst enemy and our worst critics. I can tell you this time and time again from my own experience if people are seeing changes if you're feeling better if you're improving in your workouts if you're seeing progress with numbers and measurements and if you're enjoying this process don't overthink it let your body do what it needs to chances are it is changing but you're probably very very critical i'm going to go out on a limb and guess that you're a perfectionist most likely you're being very hard on yourself and not allowing others to encourage you so whenever they tell you hey you're looking great or you're working really hard or you can i can tell that whatever you're doing is working and you're getting healthier and stronger accept it genuinely open up and enjoy the fact that you have people supporting you and encouraging you and accept those compliments it might be hard um it's been hard for me to be able to 
accept a compliment that someone gives you. You feel awkward and you feel weird, but just accept it. It's a very, very nice gesture from them, if anything, and take it to heart. So if they tell you, hey, you're looking really strong, or I noticed that you've improved in your workouts, or I can see that you, you're feeling better and you're glowing, think about it, sit on that compliment for a few minutes, and let it sink in. And I can guarantee that if you continue to do this, you're going to change how you see yourself over time and appreciate what you're doing every single day. Appreciate the work that you're putting in. Appreciate your body and the fact that it's adapting and that it's growing stronger and that it's taking on the challenges and all of the pressure that we put on it every single day to be perfect. Our strive for perfection is absolutely insane and it can place a very hard toll on your body. And by not appreciating the work that you put in and that your body puts in every day, you're shortchanging yourself. You can be enjoying this process so much more. I'm willing to bet that changes are happening. You're just not allowing yourself to see them. And I can think back from my own experience when I was uh, post-show actually, both after both of my bodybuilding shows, I would look in the mirror and I saw fat. I saw everything that was wrong with me. I didn't see any muscle definition. Um, I felt like I was regressing so far. And this was like six weeks post-show. Now I look back at pictures and I was so lean. And I'm not saying that that's the optimal way to look, but what I saw in the mirror and what was really there did not connect. And if you take the time and try and focus on making that connection, on seeing your body and seeing yourself as others see you, an amazing, strong, healthy, fit, determined, wonderful individual, this journey will be so much more enjoyable and so much more successful for you. So. My encouragement and my advice to you is accept the compliments that people are giving to you. Accept that change is happening because you're pushing day in and day out. Something is happening. Something positive is coming from this. Accept it, focus on it, and just continue to focus on your mental health and let your body do what it needs to as time goes on. Thank you so much, you guys, for all of the wonderful questions from this week. Make sure and leave your questions for next week's Q&A in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this little workout slash Q&A video, let me know in the comments below and hit that thumbs up. I can definitely do more of these for you. I like incorporating workout footage as much as possible. Typically workout videos alone don't do very well. So adding them into these Q&As might be beneficial um, if you guys enjoy it. So thank you for watching. Make sure and subscribe if you are new and I will see you guys on Monday.